Hello, hello. Welcome to our artist talk featuring Jade Hassel and Simon Tatum. My name is Jody Minnis. I'm the Exhibitions and Programming Director of Turn Gallery. And we will be speaking with these two brilliant artists today because they are part of our current exhibition in relation along with the artist True Beach. Um, I'm just gonna do that awkward thing and read their bios out loud while they sit there <laughs> looking pretty. Um, and then we'll jump right into our conversation. So starting with Jade. Jade is a China-trained multidisciplinary contemporary artist, writer, and storyteller based in Manchester, UK. Her work investigates memory and nostalgia to create unexpected narratives surrounding identity. She uses collage to thread and weave histories and tales of transformation passed down through family lineages. Her work typically centers female bodies, simultaneously existing within realms of past, present, and future. Diasporic past become reinformed by Black futures, where the resulting present is experienced as living artifacts. Her work is an exploration of identity as an exploration of materials. The work suggests that identity should be self-determined and understood and contextualized through connection with others. Her multimedia work reimagines relationships with the body as avatar, social space, and the invisible world. Jade received her bachelor's degree from the University of North Carolina Greensboro in 2013. And I believe you finished your MFA in contemporary art at the China Art, China Academy of Art, right? You finished that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we need to update that then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and going on to Simon, Simon Tatum, it was born in Georgetown, Grand Cayman. He is an interdisciplinary artist whose work centers procedures that loosely follow Du Bois' message of double consciousness. He focuses on the actions of undoing, remaking, disassembling, and reassembling print imagery, for example, advertisements or documentary images and found objects through his authorship. The imagery and objects he chooses to manipulate are relevant to his interest in colonial narratives, tourism, and his identity as a mixed-race Caribbean male who grew up negotiating foreign expectations of cultural aesthetics. His work usually takes the form of prints, drawings, sculptures, videos, and installations. He received his Bachelor of Art degree from the University of Missouri in 2017, and he received his Master's of Fine Arts degree in Sculpture and Expanded Media from Kent State University in 2021. Hello. Hello. How's everybody today? Great. Great. Yeah, feeling awesome. good today. How about yourself? Okay. I'm good. A little, a little, um, got a little cold, but I'm all right. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Still here. <laughs> Still here, yes. Um, I said before we started recording that sometimes I turn because we work with so many like different artists and because your practices overlap in such beautiful and specific ways, you forget that you don't know each other <laughs> or that you haven't met. Um, and I believe that this is the first time that you, Simon, and Jade are meeting each other virtually, right? Yes. Yeah, this is the yeah. first time. So nice to meet you virtually. So nice to meet you too, Jordi. Yeah, yeah and great. yeah, um, I'm quite excited because when we initially spoke about the exhibition in relation, um, we were talking about Drew's practice, we were talking about potentially working with Jordi again, and um, you've always wanted to work with Simon, so I thought that it was the perfect um, place to kind of allow your practices to intersect. And what I thought was really interesting, not just about your work, but about kind of the similarities between the Bahamas, between Bermuda and the Cayman Islands, all of us being um, from the Anglophone Caribbean. And I think it's, and maybe we should address this now that we understand that Bermuda is not geographically within the Caribbean. Yes. <laughs> right? But I think um, it's very similar to, um, 
came in and and also in Bahamas and in a lot of different ways. But yeah, we're totally isolated out of the Caribbean on our own. Yeah, and we um I know that scholars use the term the Black Atlantic to like weave Bermuda and even like um along the coast of North America within in the conversation mm-hmm. of this like cohesive like aesthetic or cohesive culture that was birthed out of the um, transatlantic slave trade. Um, And I think that then kind of moves us into the fact that we are from the Anglophone Caribbean because both um, Cayman, Bermuda and the Bahamas are all colonized by um, the British. And I think out of the three of us, the Bahamas is the only independent country. Yeah, Bermuda isn't independent. Nor is Cayman. Yeah, still a colony. Right. So I think it's quite interesting to see how, you know, like the remnants of um, these like colonial like ties that we have show up in your respective practices. Um, And I think that we can move into our, um, to look at your work in conversation and our presentation. So we had a really great photographer, her name is Blair Meadows, take um, photographs of the show. And I thought that this um, specific image was quite um, like grounding to our conversation because it has like your work, Simon, directly with Jade's work. And I think at first um, you have Jade's seedlings that I paired both side by side with Simon's um, installation um, to its right. And um, I'd like to talk to you Jade first about your seedlings, um, if we can go into that, I think seedling number three, yes, is first. Um, Can you talk to us about, I wanna know first, like these textures (laughs) in the work is, um, where where do do these textures come from? How do these forms emerge? Can you talk to us about um, that part of your practice first? Yes, of course. So first, I just wanna say that the previous image, um, the one with, uh, my work and Simon's work adjacent was probably my, yeah, it, like the my favorite uh, image of the exhibition. I think it's such a powerful image and the title of the show, I think, lends itself really well to the work. And I think it's so interesting, like being, you know, from different places um, within, you know, the Black Atlantic and specifically from Cayman and Bermuda, looking at them in juxtaposition, like you can see sort of like a a relationship or that there's a conversation sort of happening. Um, And so, you know, the the work that I worked on for the exhibition um, is near and dear to me. Initially, um, my, my series sort of began with onion spawns. So, I guess I can sort of like explain the onion spawns a little bit because from the onion spawns, yeah, like came the seedlings. Um, And so essentially the the onion spawns are um, mixed media. So uh, I'm using like uh, print uh, media, I'm using inks, paint, um, just to sort of like understand the relationship between myself and in in relationship to my island home so the onion is actually sort of like an emblem that exists within the country as like uh how can i how can i explain it It, it's sort of like an identifier so for instance if you were to go to bermuda or speak to bermudians all across the world most people identify themselves as onions um, so th- the reason why the onions are so important is because um, during the slave trade, the onions were the cash crop within Bermuda. So it would be essentially equivalent to what cotton was to like the U.S. South. So um, the onion became that crop that um, particularly women within Bermuda would mind um, within the fields. And for me, that was particularly poignant because as I was digging through the archives and as um, I sort of like connected myself with some imagery um, that I found in the archives from the past, I really felt like there was this um, sort of a layered, um, this sort of layered a story that was happening that I needed to like sort of deconstruct. 
And so the, the onion serves as sort of like a metaphor for what I'm doing, looking at the archives, looking at um, our relationship with colonialism, the fact that we are still a colony, and just trying to like pull back layers of meaning and understanding um, and identity, like thinking about like who we are as a people and how far you know, we sort of, we've sort of come uh, within this sort of colonial um, conversation, um, trying to identify ourselves um, as islanders, as sort of like a, a mix, a mixing of cultures, um, sort of like all emerging like at the same time. And so um, I really felt like it was important for me to um, figure out what it was that I was doing in my practice, because initially I was collaging um, because I painting sort of felt forced for me. And so collaging felt like a way felt like a way where I could sort of peel back layers and then also build layers of meaning and understanding. And so the collage sort of functioned in the same way that peeling back the layers of an onion would. And I just thought it was, you know, sort of super cool that, you know, we identify ourselves as onions. So like, for instance, if you're traveling, you're going somewhere and you see a Romanian, you would say something like, you know, you're spreading the onion juice like around the world or something. So, you know, I, I feel like I'm doing that in my practice. And um, so, so what I wanted to do was like use the onion as a metaphor. But then what I wanted to do was think about ways that, um, you know, something was alive. So I was thinking about like how culture and um, community shift over time, how, how things change, how people change, how we change as a culture. And so I was thinking about if there was something that was alive and it was sort of like ever changing, what would it look like? Or how, what would the formation be like? So, you know, initially when I began working on the, the Onion Swan series, it began sort of like as this sort of circular shape with the, the sprouts of an onion. But over time, it sort of gradually uh, morphed and merged into other different formations. And just thinking about the Caribbean space as a space for um, new formations, um, new uh, ways of being. And I feel like the Caribbean space has sort of always been that type of space. Like we have a mixing of cultures, we have a mixing of um, languages um, and many, many different things that are sort of all mashed up. And so, you know, in relationship to the transatlantic slave trade, we have become like a, an entirely new people. And so I was thinking about ways um, that I can Sort of represent this changing or this metamorphosis or um, new formation of this this one particular metaphor of, of an onion. Like, what would it look like if it became something else? Um, yeah. So it be, yeah, it began, it, so it started as a, an onion, but you know has sort of uh, merged into other things. And so you asked me about the textures, and what I wanted to do was. Um, use different elements that you know sort of spoke to me i wanted to to use elements that um felt sort of rough in some areas sort of felt, felt smooth and sort of um link together um the idea of, of layering and de delayering and it's so interesting that simon uses uh, this term debris um you know, in speaking about his work, because I feel like in my work, I'm, I'm also looking at that as well, and taking pieces from many different things and then merging it together to create something new. So in some of the works you see, um, you know, you see some body parts as well. Um, you also see like uh, some organic formations. So some of the, um, some of the uh, formations have like seeds or have like pieces of, um, ground or a soil of some sort. And so I wanted to use elements that sort of felt like uh, they were textured, they were layered, um, that sort of felt like things discarded, um, but then also uh, things to, uh, you know, become anew. If, so, so I guess that's the short. Yeah, <laughs> the short yeah. Idea. No, that was beautiful because, um, yeah, I'm glad that you referenced the show title. Um, because I was thinking about like relationships. I think my curatorial approach from we uh, first worked together with Stick It. Um, I think this is like the first like show that we've done together where I was a bit more um, ephemeral with like the concept. I was like, 
it's up here rather than you know <laughs> just like process um based and um I have always loved your onion spawn series and I've always taken to like the way that you infuse like small aspects I wouldn't really say small but like these aspects of your culture that you know aren't quite wide because I had a friend who moved to Bermuda and I asked her about it and she wasn't sure about it until she inquired and I was like yeah that um that just speaks to kind of like this the the opacity to our cultures in a way that we don't Mm -hmm. like recognize um because we're like steeped in it and I thought it was so beautiful that you would um look at the relationship to the land and the landscape in a way where you are honoring the women who are who were responsible for this crop so as I was like reading about the history they um one account said that the men were called onions um because they would be at the forefront selling the um the crop but I was like it's so beautiful that you centered women who if the crop wasn't good you couldn't sell it you know what I mean exactly. or if, right if something like if the land wasn't kept if the seeds weren't protected if like the whole like process of like germination and all of that um was not uh tended to uh specifically by the women then the capital that came from the men doing the trade wouldn't be so I thought um that to be beautiful in regards to like the symbiotic relationships between not just um woman and land but woman and man and like agriculture versus trade and history um in a way that yes during the transatlantic slave trade that was um the kind of like forefront crop for bermuda that now that history is archived in how we communicate with one another, how we see one another. Mm -hmm. Um, I identify you um, based off of something that sustained, you know, our ancestors. Um, I identify you based off of something that, um, a shared history as well within the Caribbean, because I know in the Bahamas, we had um, like a very like small, and excuse me, I'm right next to our road, but we had a very small like, I think it was pineapple, sisal, and a few other agricultural productions and that happened that sustained us. But like Bermuda, our um, production was kind of halted because of, you know, um, U.S. trade embargoes and Mm. different (laughs) things of that sort. Um, And I think that you can enter into a conversation about, like, globalization in that way as well. Yeah, like our shared experiences, our shared history, is our shared culture, these crops that, you know, if you could, yeah, I'm like, and I've also like been like extremely like hyper aware of how much I use onions as I cook now since we've been doing oh, this show. interesting. Okay, <laughs> yeah. that's super cool. Yeah, I've yeah, got a, um, a real affinity um, for them. I think about them all the time. Um, I I honestly feel like I could probably center my entire practice around the concept of an onion by peeling back layers. I could approach it through collage, through painting, through um, multimedia, like what I'm sort of doing now with quilting um, and, you know, working with fabric. I, you know, I really feel like there's a lot to be uncovered and discovered, um, you know, using that concept. But it's so interesting what you had mentioned about, um, a woman um, in relationship to the onion and you know because they were minders of the onion seed and that's essentially what I wanted to look at as well as I'm thinking about the onions spawning and growing into something new but they can't grow without the seed and so that's how the the seedling sort of emerged it's just thinking about sort of the the origin of a story um, and you know how that story sort of uh, continues on because you know, the, or or how it changes, or how history changes, and how it gets remembered. Um, and so, yeah, the what I'm looking at is a, a few different things: history. I'm looking at um, femininity and the relationship with women and women's work, particularly as I'm you know working with uh, fabrics now and sewing. Um, the 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 stories that sort of don't get told um, is sort of what I'm looking at, and so. When I'm working with the with the collages, I'm really trying to put in details that you really wouldn't see unless you were up close. 
or the textures that you wouldn't see unless you were up close and personal, um, the sort of nuances that can be, that can be missed. Yeah, that's that's so beautiful, and I think that um, we can like weave Simon's practice into this in that same vein because I think that in the same way that you are using the onion as a as a as an object, <laughs> like a central like metaphorical a, a central metaphor that like materializes um, as this object into like these layers and things that make up like sums of folds. Um, I think Simon, you do kind of the same thing in the way that you kind of weave together these disparate stories, the ways that you like collect these like different like iconographies and patterns. And um, I wouldn't say patterns more so than iconographies, iconography symbols, um, objects. Um, and then you bring them together in a way that um, is like intrinsically multi-layered and they like stay multi-layered and then those layers have to like like be in relation to one another and speak into like a a general chorus i i hope that i'm um <laughs> saying that right and thank you yeah. um ramel who is assisting us with the visual aid thank you ramel um but yeah simon i think that this your installation here has been um kind of the grounding work for the show um most of the work kind of lead back to this and then come back out um, so can you talk to us a bit about um, not just this installation, but how this like aspect of um, relationship layers, the disparate becoming one um, shows up in your practice, if it does. Sure. Um, I'll, I wanted to mention, just like Jude, I the front image that we started at the beginning of this talk, because one of my favorite images for yeah, for the show as well, because again, like it, this leans into the show title in relations and it's lovely to see the two works in conversation. Um, and there's another work as well that I think includes um, one of Drew's uh, drawings from the show in it as well that I like, but just to see the different works and different practices in relation. Um, I do think that my practice involves a lot of layers um, and different elements of collage. I feel like collage as a way of working and assemblage as a way of working has become a sort of like natural thing that I moved into, especially when I started doing work for my MFA. Um, I feel like I was working mixed media before, but like those processes of working through collage and assemblage, I feel like are things that have made sense uh, for my practice. And I think they kind of lean into you know, a lot of the things that we're talking about, they lean into way that we associate with the region, way that we associate with like localized culture within the Caribbean region. Um, when, when you read off um, my bio earlier on in the talk, and there's something that I mentioned in there, funny enough, I haven't sp spoken about in a talk in a while, but that idea of like, do or my interpretation of Du Bois's idea around double consciousness and him thinking along the lines of trying to explain like the circumstance of the African-American as being like a body that has an origin in a different continent, but then you land in America and you don't have a history to attach to. So then the person, you know, and the culture that gets developed from that person is something brand new and a lot of it is very much like fumbling through and finding new meaning based off of the surroundings uh, that are there um, and I, you know obviously that's very telling for all of us in the caribbean as well um, so i guess to speak about my works for this show it also helps to talk a little bit about my background and about grand cayman and it's really interesting to hear Jordé talk about the onions and that sort of potent history uh, and the trade that came out of Bermuda with that product. Um, Cayman is geographically a really small, Grand Cayman, which is the largest of the three, is geographically really small. It's like less than 30 miles long by whatever, 10 miles wide, right? And so I feel like its relationship within the Caribbean region and uh, 
what I think about with making my own work is also tied to industry, but Cayman, you know, wasn't a, it didn't produce very much uh, because of its size. And a lot of that it did produce was kind of sent to Jamaica because there was like, before Jamaica went independent, there was an attachment there, you know, Cayman was associated with Jamaica, like almost like a separate territory attached to them. Um, and we were governed a lot by Jamaica in the beginning as well, before Jamaica went independent. Um, or governed through Jamaica, maybe I should say. But anyways, I, I think a lot about trade because it kind of lends to Cayman's cultural background and just the history of the people there. Because it's geographically so small, people were very much like merchants and sailors. And so Caymanians mm -hmm. were very well known for hopping around to different parts of the region, whether it was Jamaica or the Bahamas, um, or sometimes ending down in Barbados or sometimes in Cuba. But this, there's a lot of movement involved and there was a lot of manual labor through that, through the sea. And what I think about a lot as far as like coming up with material that I feel like um, becomes culturally relevant to Cayman, uh, has to do with my relationship with, you know, people who were on the island, which were mainly women if they weren't going around and doing merchant work. And I like this contrast between like this very masculine identified, like men traveling and doing works as merchants or whatever on boats, and then women being home and like taking care of the structure of the island, right? And my grandmother being a sort of like matriarch in Cayman's community and someone who I grew up with and really look up to, she was really interested in, in collecting things. And she would, you know, it was like, I think it was following that sort of like wannabe British middle class uh, mentality that kind of came with Cayman and even was a sort of like a new national identity, even though Cayman's a territory, it's still this idea of like copying some things right from the former colony or for the former colonizer. And, um, you know, there was this, this idea of collecting things and she was very much aware of like collecting certain objects that were from America or from Europe or from, you know, uh, North America or South America or, or if they're going uh, into like Asian countries. But she was always very interested in the stories tied to it and stories attached to materials. And I really liked that growing up with her because I feel like, again, because Cayman's so small, it is falls to the faults of things like tourism, you know, a lot faster than I feel like other countries that have a very solid sort of national identity. And things can become very plastic and very much like mimicking a trope over and over again for the satisfaction of tourism. And I feel like things that, like what my grandmother did about collecting these objects and collecting stories with them was like a counteraction to that, like not wanting to fall to the plasticity of, of tourism and the industry kind of building and came in from the 70s forward. Um, and so that leads into my work, like, the things that are on display in the gallery right now, I'm really thinking about objects that have either been gifted to me or collected. Uh, and there's personal stories attached to them, like this one that's on the screen right now, Black Angels, um, is one of the leading objects for this series of works that I call Colonial Debris. And it was a, you know, a Black Angel collected from a thrift store in America that was gifted to me. Um, and you know, being in a place like Cayman too, another thing that's, I think, interesting about its history and the fact that it's so small is that there was a lot of um, weaving out of certain things with its sort of cultural development. So things like any sort of uh, African religions or African cultural practices were very aggressively weeded out of the islands by people being deported and sent to other areas in the Caribbean. So I feel like a lot of the objects that I'm collecting are leaning into this idea of like different sort of um, black identifying figures or mixed race identifying figures, and then adding a new meaning to them by recreating them through print or through assemblage or through installation. Um, yeah, with the black angels, I mean, I think a lot about you know, Cayman 
even though a lot of cultural African cultural practice were woven out, Cayman's a very mixed race country. And so, you know, I think about Christmas time a lot in Cayman and, you know, a lot of black families have the black angels and stuff on the Christmas trees, or it's like part of the sort of like holiday set. Um, yeah. yeah. And then bringing that back in, thinking about this sort of identifying figure that could have more yeah. meaning to it too, because we all pray and want angels to be looking after us, you know? So thinking about the simplicity of that too, of like, we want black angels to be looking after our black families on the island. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, you said, I'm, if you see me like turning my head, I'm like taking notes like a college student, um, but I'm, I'm learning so much from both of you um, when you talk and I said, I'm, one of the things that I thought was so interesting that you said, Simon, um, you said fall into defaults like tourism. And I was like, wow, like that really made me think about like the fact that within like a must, like small development island nation, you have to be, um, you would have had to have the foresight, you know, um, hundreds of years ago <laughs> to try to like erect um, an industry or industries to not allow our spaces to fall to the fault of tourism to like rebel against um plasticity that you said or this like reoccurring model of um paradise to actually like allow space for national development cultural development um identity to actually like naturally take root um in the same way that we were and that i think you said that came on was intentional about what they weaved out of the spaces you have to be just as like intentional about what you weave in and i think that the way that you um bring in like these um objects especially the black angel um the black angel was one of the uh images that i like was more keen to um when i first saw the the selective images that you sent us because i thought about the fact that um in my grandmother's house as well. Um, and I, I don't know your grandmother. I love your grandmother. Um, <laughs> I hope that she knows that she's loved by me. Um, but We'll send this yeah, talk to her afterwards so she can see it. Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about the ways in which like, the, like women, once again, like um, are so central to our Caribbean in a way that we don't like directly give them credit to. Like they are the ones that, um, were because of, like you said, and Jade said, um, the relegation of tasks and who um, did who stayed at home and who traveled. Um, they constructed our homes with these objects and these um, things that helped us to have like sense, helped us to craft our sense of self in relation to those things. So I'm thinking about the chalkies that my grandmother had. Um, mm -hmm. Her angels were white. <laughs> <laughs> they were, you know, they were in black, and um, yeah, and then you would have to go like so far outside um, of um, regular spaces to get these specialized um, thing objects. But then you realize that the object is just like a difference in paint, mm. yeah. and in and the objects that are so far to have a difference in feature they come off like a different way and you're like, I don't know <laughs> if I like want that, but the ones that are just like a difference in paint, you realize that, oh, the the difference in representation is whether you want to like, you know, engage in that or or not. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought that, that that was really, really interesting in this like idea of being gifted things um, in the Caribbean, this idea of the Caribbean. I've been thinking about the Caribbean itself as a collage for like the past mm -hmm. three years. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, um, it's 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 a collage because you it's so multicultural, it's so um, multifaceted, it's so and whoever comes brings, you know, and whoever leaves takes in a way. Um, mm -hmm. So it's like the shape shifting, very organic, like Jade's work. Um, anthropomorphic like space that um, yeah just continues to evolve and to develop as you know intentionally or unintentionally um, I think that I wanted to talk about um, Jade your seedlings not the seedlings um, 
I think it's Missinetti and another one of your small onion works that we paired side by side. And um, we have them kind of at the end of the exhibition. Mm -hmm. I try to think of exhibitions like sentences. So you like go right to left. Um, and I love these because specifically because the background is black and I had to be reminded that onions grow underground. Yes. <laughs> Listen, I could either be they, like they, the... grow, they grow from darkness. Um, we, you know, which is really interesting that you even mentioned that. Um, particularly because I worked on these uh, two collages um, when I was at a residency uh, last year in Virginia, and um, where I was working, the land was um, indigenous to um, Indian um, communities. And, you know, there's like a whole um, sort of, you know, uh, spiel on, you know, who the land, the land was right. to. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it was just really interesting for me to um, be there on that soil, making work in that space, thinking about um, the, the relationship between women and land. Um, I was working on a, a body of work uh, that looked specifically at um, Nellie Musson's book, um, Mind the Onion Seed. And um, the book is an incredible book and it's out of print and it actually like should be taught in schools. But essentially she chronicled so much of Black Bermudian um, heritage and history and and it was essentially just from collecting like she she collected so many different things so it's interesting that simon is also saying you know that his grandmother um was a collector and what that actually means like um within caribbean culture like the people who actually collect objects they collect stories um but the fact that she actually took the time out not only to collect objects that she and photographed and had it within the book, speaking specifically about like Black Romanian heritage, um, but also that she um, took the time to write the story, to put the book together and to assemble all of this knowledge and information that could have essentially been lost. Um, and yeah. so the, the book is such a special book to Romanian culture. Um, it, like I said, it was out of print. So over the past, I would say two years, I've been collecting like small chapters that people have like scanned to send to me um, because I didn't have the entire book initially. Um, and then uh, someone just gifted me the book last year. I like put out <laughs> like a request on Facebook, on Instagram. Like I also uh, even, even sent a message prior to that um, asking if anybody like has the book if they can like scan it to me. Uh, but someone actually gifted me like a hard a hard cover copy of the book and it was like the best the best thing ever so essentially oh wow, that's amazing um, yeah like these works are inspired by by that and she titled the book mind the onion seed um and and it just chronicled like black Bermudian um, history and particularly women's um, role within that um because it sort of has like you know a few chapters on like black nurses and um, sort of like uh, the matriarch of families. And so I think, to, to be honest with you, and it, it might be an overstatement, but I really think that she was like one of the first feminist Bermudian writers um, that actually, you know, penned um, stories, like verbal stories that were, you know, passed down. Um, some of the, the treasures that she has in the book are just incredible. And um, yeah, and so I wanted to create um, a few works that I sort of paid homage to that, looking specifically at the onion, building up the layers. Um, one of the things that was also really special for me about these particular works um, were that these onions were created from postcards. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I essentially um, had like a bunch of postcards and I was thinking about how, um, the postcard is sort of a temporal, like how it sort of moves within space and travels through time. So, you know, you send them, you write a message and then you send a postcard into the future for someone to receive it. 
And so I felt like there was like a relationship between the idea of sending a message um, to someone in the future and also the gift that Nellie Musson left us with with that book was that she sat down and penned this book and sent us those messages um, into the yeah. future. And so, yeah, this work um, was really um, special for me. And what I loved about mm -hmm. them um, was also that, you know, these works are really small as well. Yeah. And so yeah. there's there's sort of um, an intimacy about them. You, you have to go up um, close to them to experience them and I wanted to look at that, like, like what does it mean to experience um, a work in closeness? Um, yeah. What does it mean to um, take an idea that might be so grand and make it um, small and intimate for someone to actually have to have an experience with it, as opposed mm -hmm. to something, you know, where you like maybe step back and it, you know, it engulfs you. Like, what does it mean for you to to then approach something and to experience a work in that way, which is different for mm -hmm. me because I usually work bigger. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I felt like the, the stories that she was telling within, within the book were so personal um, and were so intimate that the work needed to be um, on the scale. Oh, that, that is quite a treat. And I feel like I have to go on the same like looking journey that you did now. And I think that that's so beautiful. I, I'm like learning so much about the like added intersections between your work because I think um, Simon with the musicians, some of the um, images or textures that you use for that work um, came from um, some of the, I, I think your grandmother's archive and also um, uh, you you explained better than me. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I again, it's so it's so interesting to see the the commonalities of like interest and then way of working. I mean, you know what that book that Jade is describing must. I mean, it must just be invaluable and to collect different chapters of it over time yeah. too as like an interesting sort of practice and like yes, I mean, like a really lovely thing. Um, I yeah, I, I feel like it's funny with Cayman. I feel like there is like a lot of limited edition books that different people will write. And depending on who the writer is, it could be like a very specific thing. It can be like a fictional story talking about, uh, you know, a, a family talking about like their family slave history or something like that. Or it could be like a very specific topic about this meeting that happened in the 1970s that was underreported, blah, 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 blah. But it's finding these limited edition books you know, and collecting those stories is, I feel like, um, so telling when it comes to like building up like a personal archive for me in the studio. Um, and I, you know, it's, 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 it's I, I think, um, with my grandmother, she does a similar thing. Um, you know, just like what you're talking about with it was Miss Nettie, right, Jade? Nelly, yeah, Nelly, Miss Nelly. Miss Nelly. Just like um, with Miss Nelly, kind of collecting these different stories. My my grandmother also did something similar, or still does. My my grandmother is a funny person where she's done a lot of things that kind of coexisted, and you can see how one thing led into another. Like she wanted to be a writer, and then went to being like a school teacher, then like became like administrator and then leaned back into writing again, but on the journalist side. And then from there became like an editor. And then finally before retiring, like a politician. Um, and within that wheelhouse of things that she was doing, um, she, you know, just, just as these people do, as they collect, she collected or kept a lot of prints from magazines or newspapers that either she wrote for or she edited um and i've have been lucky enough to get certain, you know copies if she has like a second edition copy of them and it's become my my practice now to kind of like scan these in um and i am really interested in like the imagery especially like the imagery from the 70s because i feel like that's an important time for cayman along with so many other countries in the region when you're like there's this sort of like post-nationalist agenda happening on all the different islands, even though Cayman is still 
an overseas territory, it's allowed to govern itself now, right? Um, and so it's all these agendas at play. And then there's also tourism, you know, again, like the sort of like cancerous effect of the tourism industry is like seeping in. And so I like to look at those old publications from the 70s and think about like how Cayman represented itself. And you can tell there's like different moments of like when it feels like the magazine is more for like somebody visiting versus more when it feels like it's for the locals. Um, so I, I scan a lot of those images and then I use them as textures within my own collage work. My, my way of doing collage more recently with like the musicians um, is rather than taking apart the original material, I scan it and then I reprint it on like arts paper, whether it's watercolor paper or whatnot, I'll cut it apart and then I'll put it back together as a collage and then rescan it again. And I'll do this several times over and eventually I'll see pin like, like physical materials, whether it's like flowers or cut tea or something like that. Um, and I'll, that will seep into the, you know, the range of scannings. And then I'll also play with it through Photoshop. Um, and that's how I kind of create a lot of these, what I call like posters, but they're basically like collages that have been scanned multiple times over. And then I print them on like fine art paper and they become like limited edition prints. Um, for the two musicians that are on display at the gallery now, there's an image that reoccurs in them over and over again. And I can tell that story. Um, one of the, the one of the magazines that my grandmother used to edit was called uh, the Norwester, you know, off the Norwester storms that would come through after the holiday times, which funny enough came in had a big Norwester this year. Um, but anyways, the Norwester magazine, and they would do special holiday editions. And there was one holiday cover, which was very funny because I felt like the image of it was it was like right in the middle what it felt like it was going for. It was appealing both to like the local Caymanians, but also felt like it was like a tourist advertisement. Where was this image of all of these children that were part of like a choir and they were holding candles and obviously like doing some sort of song or performance on stage. Um, and they're all in robes. But of course, Cayman being very proud of being like a very mixed race nation, it just felt very curated where it's like, you know, a black kid, a white kid, a mixed race kid, a black kid, a white kid, a mixed race kid, just like lined up in a row. Um, and photographed at a funny angle too, that they're obviously on a stage that's higher than the photographer. And that image just always struck me as something powerful for so many different reasons. But for the musicians, I was thinking about that a lot, like within both of the musician prints, I'm focusing on one of my like icons. So these are the collected objects that I was talking about earlier that I use within the different images. So, and they're both musicians. One's a black cherub that's playing like a viola. And the other one is like a bagpiper, you know, this sort of like brown woodcut bagpiper. But I wanted to surround them with this children's choir. So the children's choir is used within various elements within both the prints you know, for like uh, the image that's on, oh, that was on display, that's on the, the what is the side is this? The right hand side for me, um, it shows like the cut hands of the candles, you know, of the children holding the candles. And then with like the alternative image, there's like sections of the robes or like smiles from the children that show up in like the panes of the glass uh, that's placed within, um, within the images. But yeah, I definitely feel like that sort of material is so great as far as like retracing stories and retracing, I feel like the agenda of who the stories were for, whether it was like photo images or whether it's like written narratives um, within our countries. Um, and especially during that time period of like 60s, 70s, 80s, where you know, all these new nations within the Caribbean are figuring out what it is that they want. And so there's so many different agendas at play. Yeah, that's um, really interesting. I didn't realize that, um, and I've been looking at these works for a while now, I didn't realize that the icons are playing instruments. I don't know how that just like 
man open my head because i because <laughs> i'm always fixated on like the candles like the um you said the choir um yeah. holding the candles and some people take that in a very religious context um when we have like conversations with them and then the the persons at the top of the image i think on the left <laughs> um i didn't like they just like become reduced to kind of like their skin tone and like these like different shades and ranges so i think that that is quite um beautiful thank you for explaining that i think that um we have about like 10 minutes left because i don't want to take us too far <laughs> you know off i feel like the three of us could talk all day yeah. but we have things to do um so yeah i think it's really really powerful um the work that both of you are doing not just um with and I think art is important and it's necessary um, as like documents and evidence of the research. But I think that, that artists don't get enough credit for the length of research, like how mm -hmm. deep we dive, how um, investigative the work is. And then like, it's just like flattened to this, like, oh, it's pretty or, <laughs> or it's nice, <laughs> that's shiny. But no, it's like deep investigative work, cultural archiving I think um, is what both of you are doing and not just archiving um, for the sake of, and, and I guess it kind of like pulls me into the underlying premise of the show as well, where I was looking at um, relationships, but looking at what affects me um, personally is um, like the personal in forms of political and there's like a deep um like relationship and i know that that's a quite a feminist statement um that that is taken from the personal as political mm -hmm. but i think that that's quite universal now in that you know if i'm not able to feed myself then um that is directly tied to a political issue and that political issue is not like succinct to me or specific to me and my people but at any point um, this personalized experience can become a global political problem. Um, and I think the things that we've covered um, in regards to our relationships with the landscape, our relationships with self-identifying, um, identif like being um, specific in how we define ourselves as budding nations and as going ongoing nations, food security, trade, agriculture, yeah. the way that we like oh, care man. about, you know, like the way that we care about um, our relationship to the land, our relationships with one another, the way that we, um, you know, don't um, continue to uh, fall to the default. I feel like I feel like my next show is gonna be false, like fall to the default, Simon. So if you see it, just oh, know that I will, I, will, I will give you credit. <laughs> um, yeah, that's actually um, a really great title. It it is. Yeah. Ah, it's it's so beautiful. Um, but is there anything else that you all want um, us to know about the work? Is there any work that you wanted to talk more about that we didn't um, cover just before? Um, I, oh, go ahead, Simon. I didn't mean to. No, no, you go first. I, Cause I actually okay. have a question for you. So that's what no, I was gonna I end with. I was like, let me, ask, let me ask your day a question. <laughs> Love this. Yeah, okay. yeah, I had a question for you as well. Um, yeah, and so I, I don't mind uh, going first. Um, so I guess, like, for me, um, I'm always interested in, in sort of like the process to which we um, arrive at the work. And so for you, like, when you're in your studio and you're thinking about some of the themes or the ideas that you want to um, see in the world because you're engaged with that, Mm -hmm. um, can can you speak a little bit about like your um, your research or your um, your art because you mentioned that you are you now have a personal archive which I think is totally amazing. Yeah. Um, so can you speak a little bit about like your archival process and like um, or how much you might be like engaged in the archives and then also about maybe like the access that you have to particular archives. Um, because I know, like, for me, um, accessing the archives, I have to, like, fly all the way, like, to Bermuda to access yeah. specific things. Yeah. 
Yeah. So um, how how has that been for you, like in your in your research and in you know sort of the collecting of all the information that you do? Um, how accessible has it been? Um, and um, how how do you sort of like navigate that, like within your studio practice? Is it is it like maybe fifty percent archival and fifty percent imagination, or is sort of like everything based in sort of um, historical information? Yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a great question. Um, I feel like with my work, it is very imaginative, and I feel like I have um, there's definitely like an archival background or like a knowledge or like source materials that I feel like influence the making. But in the end of the day, it is very imaginative. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I feel like when I was uh, in correct because I'm not that long out of grad school, just a few years out of grad school. When I was in grad school, there was a conversation a lot about the type of practices that I was gravitating towards. So like collage and assemblage as ways of making. And then mm -hmm. thinking about like the art history behind that. And I feel like there are so many things leaning into like surrealism that mm -hmm. um, I admire, I don't know if I say that I can take full ownership as, as, as like that being a sort of like type of practice, but I feel like there's lots of ways of working that came out of like a sort of Western surrealism that affect my work or sort of like Western uh, like Dada art. Um, but I feel like for me, what I, what I have come out of the sort of MFA thinking about is like assemblage and collage makes sense for me as far as ways of working because it's like building a sort of like a new reality or like a middle ground. And I think that leans back into that original statement from Du Bois, like Du Bois was talking about like, like the state of the African American being the sort of like middle ground between two states. And I feel like with my work or even with like colonial debris as a title for this new series, it's like finding a middle ground for a lot of different types of stories to come together and merge. Um, and But the output is definitely very imaginative. Um, mm -hmm. And Colonial Debris is a title I, I, I came up with based off of travel. So I feel like a lot of my work in the studio, and especially in the beginning, had to deal with like archives. And, and I spent a lot of time when I was studying in the States Whenever I got to go home to Cayman, I would spend a lot of time in like the Cayman National Archive because we're lucky enough to have an institution like that there. And I mean, I, I pulled up a lot. Archive is there being. Um, hmm? You froze a little bit, but go right back oh, in. Oh, well, I'll, I'll make this. But they're, they're being you fed can. a lot of material from the community to make the National Archive. And when I noticed that, I thought to myself, like, oh, that's so interesting. Like, so things like my grandma's contribution are valuable on like that sort of level. So if that's the case, then going into like things that my grandma has collected is just as like valuable to me mm. you know, or legitimate to me as it is like going into like a collected archive from like a national institution. So I feel like when when I'm home and came in, I do both when it comes to the archive. But yeah, I mean, when I'm off island, it's not as accessible. Um, so I do cherish like certain things that I can scan and digitize and take with me or, you know, rare physical copies of things that my grandmother will let me have. Um, or like even collecting things like out of print books that are speaking about stories for Cayman or the wider region. I, you know, I'm very, I cherish those things as far as like fuel to the engine of my creative practice, but the output definitely always ends up being something imaginative. And with the Colonial Debris series, it's very much thinking about going around the region and seeing things that exist that are debris from like a colonial history that it, it almost like takes a lot of resources to get rid of. Um, you know, I, I think about that a lot. Like, what are the resources of like remaking the region and getting rid of all of these colonial markers? Mm -hmm. um, and seeing that in the smaller objects as well. So I feel like that's where I came to that term of colonial debris. Um, but if I have 
a little bit more time. I wanted to ask you, Jade, because again, I'm I'm fresh out of grad school, and me too. Just, me too, by the way. Really? Oh my gosh! Yeah, in 2022, I graduated, so I'm I'm fresh. Oh my probably gosh, even fresher than you. I think you're one year fresher than me, yeah, which I didn't yeah. realize. Well, my my question for you is a very like sort of studio art nerd material thing. I mm -hmm. I am so interested in how you navigate in and out of three-dimensional and two-dimensional and all the different surfaces that are created and with you i was wondering about that like how much does hopping from like one material to the other affect the sort of like uh, or impact the creation of the artwork as much as like the archives and the stories that uh you're pulling from yeah, that's such a good question. It's funny. I actually made a post about this today, actually. Um, yeah, I made a post about um, just sort of like not being tied to one particular media. Mm -hmm. um, I think, and, and this is, this, maybe this is the, re the rebellious part of me, but coming, coming from Bermuda and growing up in a place that's still very much so colonial um, yeah. feels like I need to explore. And so like when I grew up, I, I had maybe one particular idea about what an artist should be, what an artist should look like and what they should paint. Um, mm. In Bermuda, most of the imagery are like images of um, tourism, of flowers, of boats, of some of the architecture. And so you don't really see yourself reflected, um, it, you know, as I was growing up. And so you know, for me as an artist now working, now having gotten past that sort of uh, limitation of like what an artist is, um, I, I felt like I wanted to explore that. I wanted to not be tied to one specific medium. When I left Bermuda, I was thinking that in order to be an artist, you had to be a painter, right? Like you had to you know, work in oil paint or watercolor because that's what most of the, the paintings are there. And so um, going to university, well, getting my master's degree in, um, in China was the best thing that could have ever happened for me in my practice. Um, first of all, because I sort of learned out of like the Western canon um, yes. of art history. And um, I think it expanded my scope and my understanding of, of sort of how art functions within a culture and is not uh, so like in China, just, you know, being there and observing it, like their, their language and um, sort of like the century paintings and the calligraphy, like those are all aspects that are deeply like embedded in the culture and to see a people like actually live the things that they're making is so interesting uh, to me. And so one of the things that, you know, our professors like encouraged us to do was explore medium. So if I had painting something, it would be highly critiqued, maybe. And, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and so like, it felt like a place where I could explore beyond a specific thing. I could do whatever. Um, one of my tutors in particular, uh, Jeremy Morgan, absolutely love him. Um, he was the one that really, really encouraged me to um, explore all of my curiosities and um, not to be tied to one specific thing now mm -hmm. i i don't uh i so before i make something i'm i'm not like hmm i want this spe specific thing to be uh, a collage or i want this specific thing to be a quilt or something mm -hmm. i always just sort of like follow like whatever um my interest is at the time so right now i'm really really interested in sewing and um uh sort of like reclaimed fabric um, and I think that my practice is sort of tied to wherever I am located. So at the moment, I'm based in Manchester in the UK. Yeah. And um, my studio is in a former textile mill. So I think that there's sort of like this sort of like underlying uh, thing or energy that I'm feeling. And it's sort of encouraging me to explore uh, fabrics, reclaim fabrics in that way. Because I am sort of looking at um, the relationship between uh, I'm, I'm looking at a colonial botany and looking at um, particularly how in this specific place um, cotton uh, was manufactured and how 
um, that has like sort of, you know, created the industrial revolution and yeah, just all of that. <laughs> so I think working in yeah textiles makes sense for that particular interest. Yeah. So I, I'm not married to one thing. It's like, I, I choose whatever medium best communicates what it is that I'm trying yeah. to explore or, or say at that particular time. Um, but yeah, I'm also like a studio nerd as well. And like, I don't know, maybe some other time, like we can like hop on a call or something. Cause I love like speaking with artists, like about practice and yeah, but that's the short version. <laughs> Thank you. And I mean, I totally am with you with that. Like K-Man has a similar mentality of like, you know, there's still this attachment to painting on canvas with oil. And it's like, let's get away from that. No more painting yeah. on canvas with oil. Let's break down the barrier, you know, like let's, yeah. let's do, work with other materials. So I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like it's sort of like a D, um, it is a decolonization yeah, as well. it's like a decolonization yeah. of materials because also mm -hmm. like some materials are like meant to be more like crafty or like like what is craft or it's not like fine art. Um, but then even when you think about that, you have to think then about like access, like who mm -hmm. can make materials or who has access to specific materials. Like when I first began making in China before I even went to um, get my master's like I started collaging because that was what was in front of me yeah. um, I had magazines there and so it was about you know what what I had around me and I think you know when we when we look at making which is intrinsic to I think just like human expression and how we you know live our lives like people made with with the materials that were there yeah. not necessarily like you know let me go to, to some store and buy some, you know, fine, fine art oil stick, like people made with the materials that, that were there. And I think being in China and seeing how they use their resources in that way. Yeah. Um, yeah just sort of like expanded my mind on what could be material. What could, what, what can I use within, within my practice? Yeah. So just because I selfishly want um, you two to not, like continue this conversation <laughs> um i uh just want to formally wrap this up and then we could continue talking um off of the recording so um thank you to everyone who's tuned into this talk in relation will be on view until march 16th um you can visit the gallery um monday through saturdays um monday by appointment only tuesday through saturday from 10 a.m to 6 p.m we had a lovely time talking with Simon Tatum and Jerday Hassel. You can find them on um, all social media platforms. Um, and maybe we'll just put your like tags in the YouTube um, description. <laughs> uh, so thank you both so much for your time. Thank you for your work. Thank you for your generosity in this conversation. And I will see you later. Thank right. you, Jody. Thank it was you. Awesome. Thank you.